Hello, you're watching Danski, and in this video we're going to check out some of the biggest new features for Adobe Illustrator 2021, all in about five minutes. So let's get started. So you can see I've opened up a colorful and complex illustration. I'm going to go to edit and down to recolor artwork. This window pops up and we can literally do just that. Grab all of the different colors and recolor them however we like. There's also a few other options that you can see me playing around with here. These change in real time. And if you're not sure what some of these options are, just hover over them and you get a tooltip pop up with a brief description. And you can see I've now opened up the advanced options panel, a slightly different interface with a few more options for adjusting your colors. Let's go back to the default recolor artwork window. And we can go up here and we can choose from color libraries or we can go down and we can choose how many colors we would like. So I've selected two and you can see I can move this around. So we're using these two colors and then tints of those colors. Now we can use the slider to determine the prominence of each color. So you can have a lot of fun recoloring your artwork in real time. You can also go to color.adobe.com, click the explore tab. You'll see blue is trendy today, but we can also go up and perform our own search. I'm gonna type warm and Adobe Color will serve me up loads of different color palettes and I can pick one, add it to a library or download it as a JPEG. So we'll download this one and we can then place this JPEG into our document. Whoa, that's a bit big. I'm just gonna scale this down and position this above my artwork. Well, not my artwork, Adobe Stock's artwork. So we'll go back to recolor artwork and we can click on color theme picker and with the eyedropper click on the color palette and you can see the artwork is recolored with colors from that color palette and if you'd like to make any adjustments then you've got all the options in this panel ready at your disposal cloud documents well i think this is pretty self-explanatory but we'll cover it anyway so typically you would save a local document now we can switch over to save cloud document we can save this to our Creative Cloud account and this then syncs with Illustrator on the iPad or we can switch back to a local save and then save it to our hard drive. Another new addition is version history so any cloud synced documents now live in this panel. Okay so we have an icon and some text. With the text selected from the bottom of the character panel we now have the new snap to glyph options. You can see all these here. Hovering over them gives you a tooltip and you can simply just click to enable or disable them. And if I go ahead and move this icon up and down you'll see it start to snap to things like the baseline, the X height, essentially all of these other aspects of design and typography. And ultimately this just helps us align shapes with text more effectively. Okay, so we have a paragraph of text. By default, it snaps to the top. Now with area type, we can snap this to the middle, the bottom, or we can space it out throughout the entire text box. We also get a few more options here as well. Another new feature is the ability to select shapes and text. Now previously, if we align these to the top and bottom, you can see it aligns to the frame, not the actual text. Now, with these additional options here, we can align to glyph bounds, select point text, for example. And when we align this to the top and the bottom, it actually aligns it with the text itself rather than the actual frame. Useful stuff. Okay, another new text related feature. So I've got some text. I'm gonna to go to type, down to character, to bring up the expanded character panel. I can go up to the top right and select show font height options. You see this extra box appears. Now by default, our font size is determined by the M box, but you can see that we can actually adjust our font size by the cap height, the X height, these other type related attributes. So as a quick example, if I set my X height to 100 points and I'll go and create a square, I'll make this 100 by 100. And if I just zoom in here, you'll see that this square perfectly matches the 100 point X height that I set for my text. Okay, last but not least, you can see I've added a logo to a background, but there's always the risk that you move the background by mistake, right? You know what I'm talking about. 
So if I go up to object, lock and selection, the background is now locked and I can't move this by mistake. Now if I go to preferences up here or edit preferences on windows, we now have this new option, select and unlock objects on canvas. Let's click OK. We can now select this rectangle and we get this lock icon. We can click it directly and it immediately unlocks our background. And there we go, that wraps up the video. Like, comment, share and subscribe for more. Take care and I'll see you next time.